I wanted to know, this is where this starts, the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, Jack Kennedy. And if you notice, July 26, uh, he, he had this quote, the loss of even one human life, or the malformation of even one baby who may be born long after we are gone. He's referring to the, to the, the length of time that strontium-90 remains in the atmosphere. It should be of concern to us all. Our children and grandchildren are not merely statistics toward which we can be indifferent. He, he said this, and he unilaterally suspended all above-ground nuclear testing on that day, July 26th. He sent the information he had to Russia, China, uh, and every other nuclear country in the world, and England, and said, we've got to stop, we're going to do it first. And before he died, the last official act of his presence, before he was assassinated in Dallas, he signed the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty in late October 1963. So there's a reason we no longer test nuclear weapons above ground. Jack had two young children and a wife. This is the reason. Strontium-90, which is what this is right here, okay? strontium-90 in the U.S., is determined by baby teeth. Now, well, baby teeth is important because when you look at strontium-90, it collects on calcium. So if you want to know if someone's got a bad amount of strontium-90, you have to pulverize calcium, analyze it, and then you know how much strontium-90 absorbed. The baby teeth study was done by taking a child, and when their tooth dropped out of their mouth, you would track where the child was conceived, where the child was in utero, where the child grew up until the day the truth dropped. Then you compared that with the data of <coughs> cancer clusters in those same areas. And the correlation was astounding, so much so that when the Kennedys first was presented with the report, within one day he said, we're stopping, let's look at this. Within one week he did the test ban uh, that he, he launched. And this is how high it got, okay? It's very important. It got to 350. Uh, now, this is the effect of what happened because he banned it. Notice the strontium-90 dropping. There's only two sources of strontium-90 on the planet Earth, only two. Above-ground nuclear testing and the normal operation every day of a nuclear power plant, which we have 104. Only two sources, no other way to get strontium-90. So here's what happened. We start seeing this effect because we have a nuclear test ban treaty. Thank God we're not going to blow up bombs in the air anymore. And look what happens. We started building nuclear power plants, and the strontium-90 concentrations go up and up. This is right now the period we're in. Notice that we are now above this line. When we gave that statistic to Steve Ainsley, one of our neighbors over in Montecito, who used to be the publisher of the Boston Globe, he said, my God, we've obliterated the entire advantage of stopping nuclear testing above ground. We've obliterated it. And by the way, that line will continue up inexorably because the half-life of strontium-90 is 29 years. So what we emitted 28 and a half years ago is still going to accumulate that line. So think about it. That line's going through the roof. Well, under normal operation, routine radiation releases. Now, these are not from a Fukushima or Chernobyl. These are from actual routine operations of fission. We are reversing the benefits of the nuclear test ban treaty. Strontium-90 is a silent killer. Unlike cigarettes, an individual can't avoid inhaling it. It's there. It's in the air right now. In fact, if you saw the wind patterns above the fire that's coming across the ridge, that wind pattern is bringing the wind directly down from Diablo towards us. You'll see why that's important in a moment. It takes collective action to prevent the deadly consequences of nuclear pollution. I can't just quit smoking. It's there, whether I like it or not, so we have to collectively stop it, or I can't stop it. So do we know closing nuclear power plants will save the lives of women, men, and children? The number one target of strontium-90, the worst victims, are children. Okay? Childhood cancers are huge with strontium-90. The second worst victim, believe it or not, are women, breast cancer. And of that, the group with the highest incidence of correlation are lactating women. Think about it. Calcium, lactating women, of course, are going to have more breast cancer. So breast cancer rates have been going up in America absolutely consistent with the increases in strontium-90. So if you want to be involved in preventing breast cancer rather than curing it, what we want to do is get the strontium-90 out of the atmosphere. So yes, because it already has. How do we know that, that, that the nuclear power plants going down will stop? Well, California's Rancho Seco nuclear power plant was closed in 1989 by a local initiative crafted by this man, Ben Davis. He'll, his name will come up in a moment. You'll see why. <clears throat> After the shutdown, childhood cancer rates in the surrounding area dropped dramatically. Oops. Here's what they were. Here's what they dropped to. Okay? As a result of closing down one nuclear power plant. 
After the shutdown, thyroid cancer rates in the surrounding area dropped dramatically. Here's what they were. Here's what they are after the shutdown. That line, by the way, represents statewide averages. Rancho Seco is in an agricultural area of the state. It should have lower rates, and now it does again. It is now a universal contamination of the environment. These chemicals are sinister and little recognized partners of radiation and changing the very nature of the world, the very nature of its life. Specifically mentioning, this is Rachel Carson, strontium-90, okay, so we're talking strontium-90, released through nuclear explosions, she didn't know about <coughs> nuclear fission, comes to the earth and rain or drifts, is down as a fall, lodges in soil, enters the grass, and time takes up its abode in the bones of a human being, there to remain until his or her death. She died approximately one month after giving that testimony to Congress of breast cancer. She knew. And this was Rachel Carson. So Rancho Seco shut down. SMUD, San Sacramento Municipal Utility District, was transformed into a successful green electricity program. And as a nuclear utility, look at this. They lost $575 million in 1989. Without nuclear, they ended up making a $46 million profit just three years later. Nuclear makes no economic sense. In fact, it doesn't even, in California, we don't need it. This chart, and by the way, this was recently updated by Cal ISO, which is in charge of all prediction of electricity for the state of California. This chart shows, here's peak summer demand, there's excess power, then cushions peak demand, and here's where our nuclear power is on top, meaning we don't need it. That's important because the big bugaboo that the nuclear industry always throws is, gee, we don't want the lights to go out. It isn't an issue. There's no, there's no issue with that. Here's one that's important. The Nuclear Re Regulatory Commission, which is completely bought, paid for, and owned by the, by the nuclear industry. The outgoing chairman no longer feels nuclear is safe. Here he is. His name is Jasko. All 104 nuclear power reactors now in the operation of the United States have a safety problem that cannot be fixed and should be replaced with newer technology, according to the former chairman. 2013, talking very current. Now, that he's, sweet, that he's finally squealing on his own industry, I think, is fascinating. But he's doing it because he's absolutely right. And he wants to go down in history as not a bad guy. The fact is he knows enough to say that, and he kept his mouth shut when he was the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Continuing to put Band-Aids is not going to fix the problem. Just so you'll know, we'll, we have a chart I can show you, but not tonight, of all of the complaints issued by employees of nuclear power plants in the 104 plants across the United States, and you will see that the complaints of the employees at Diablo are more than twice the national average, it means twice as dangerous as the average plant, and this is the average plant he's talking about. Apart from the silent killer, strontium-90, and this insanely expensive thing called nuclear power, apart from that fact, apart from the fact there is no long-term storage solution for radioactive waste that will remain lethal for 10,000 years, we can't ignore that nuclear catastrophes, in fact, do happen. We know Three Mile Island happened. We know Chernobyl happened, and we've got Fukushima. And for those who don't know, it's 2011, Fukushima went off. As I stand here tonight, Fukushima is still reacting. Thousands of gallons of radioactive water are going every day into the ocean. They're washing up on the shores of Hawaii, Seattle, and now California. That reaction has not stopped. It cannot be stopped with the technology they're applying. So even if you don't have one of these at Diablo, we've still got strontium-90. But here's the problem. Let's look at Diablo. Oops, what too fast. Okay, so Diablo, when it first was put online, that's Diablo right there, was built on the San Gregorio fault line. Pretty stupid to begin with, particularly since the San Andreas is back here. What they failed to point out in their licensing application is that these two fault lines cross right about here. Now, when two fault lines cross, and that's the San Andreas, it increases the magnitude of the earthquake you get when, the, when either one moves. And as you can see, this is built right on that fault line. So they claim that this was a small shelf, but in fact, it's a major fault line, and it's crossing, but right about here, it crosses the San Andreas, which means it has a potential for at least a 7 to an 8 on the Richter scale. But look at this. Every single one of these purple lines is a fault line. Every single one of them. Look at them. All these. Now, that thing is sitting in a triangle of fault lines. Why on earth would you put it there? And if you did do something that dumb, why would you leave it there? So this is a blow-up, so you can see how those plants, all these different fault lines work. Okay, that's where we are. Right there, that's it. So, and in case you're wondering if a Fukushima-type tsunami could hit Diablo, this is an interesting slide, because this, this is actual tsunami damage from a prior tsunami that hit here, 
here, here, and here, and of course, there's the Diablo right in the middle of it. So we've had experience with tsunamis on that coastline, for reasons I can give you later. Okay, so here's where we are, Santa Barbara. This map is the 50 and 100 mile buffer zones to plan our evacuation in the event of a nuclear incident. Now, the problem is, when you have a wind that blows like this, which they're currently doing, that means it's going to carry the radioactive material past that 50 mile line to the 100 mile line. You're here at 85 miles. So when the winds are blowing as they are today because of the, of the white fire, we're actually getting more strontium-90 than when it's not blowing, because if it blows inland, then it goes to Santa Maria. Now, having said that, it's amazing to me that people don't realize how close that we are to this thing. But they have forgotten that, and that's why I want to get this conversation started. Now, the good news is, and this really is good news, there are reliable alternatives that California can bring online for less than it costs to operate a nuclear power plant, let alone build one. So, uh, for example, the, um, the Bright Star project in the desert, which is about to go online in five, six months, the entire project cost $900 million. I'm suing Southern California Edison for a billion dollars back just for having been off the, for having turned off in January. And that's not, a billion is not the whole plant. That's just a couple of years they've been charging us when they haven't been giving us electricity. I don't know, if, show of hands, are all of you aware that San Onofre has been offline since January 2012 and we've been paying for electricity, it hasn't delivered a kilowatt? How many people know that? Great, well you're a well informed audience, it's a general matter. Most people don't even know that, it's still pumping. So we have solar, we have hydrogen, wind to hydrogen, which is a particular expertise of ours in the academy. We're probably the leading uh, experts on that in the United States. Mm -hmm. Germany is the leading expert in the world on it. Uh, we are one of the leading experts in the academy at geothermal, and of course we're all familiar with solar thermal and RV. So, this to me is a Paul Revere moment, okay? It's, we must awaken the Central Coast to the ongoing death and destruction, an enormous potential for catastrophe, an enormous potential for catastrophe, and we cannot wait, because even if we're lucky and nothing really goes wrong at Diablo, every day something is going wrong at Diablo. So if we care about breast cancer, if we care about childhood leukemia, if we care about thyroid cancer, we've got to shut this thing down before anything really goes wrong because every day it's killing people. So we formed, oh this by the way is the cover of the book I did in 97, that's the Gorbachev endorsement and Ralph Nader wrote the foreword for me. We rarely have the extended time to reflect on what we've accomplished together and what lessons there are for the future. We are demonstrating this book just how valuable such a reflection can be because when you reflect on it and you understand what we have to choose, the choices become obvious. So if we start the conversation, I'm pretty sure I know where it's going to come up. So the goals of our Safe Energy Project at the Academy are these. Permanently shut down San Onofre nuclear plant. Obtain a rebate for consumers upwards of 1.2 billion. Provide clean, safe, renewable energy solutions to replace nuclear power in California. There's a whole docket called Long-Term Power Docket that's going to be launched at the PUC. We've been asked to, bring, uh, to testify and, and bring our expertise to it, which we will. Close the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant, obviously and conduct a voter education plan about the risks of nuclear power for the recently approved 2014 ballot initiative to ban nuclear in California. Just so you'll know, the state Supreme Court just approved an initiative to go on the ballot. Remember I mentioned a guy named Ben Davis earlier. Ben actually wrote the initiative. He's a, um, an, an affiliate and associate of the World Business Academy. Uh, the Supreme Court just authorized that initiative to be put on the ballot for 2014. We as an organization, we're a 501c3, so we cannot lobby. So we're arranging for Ben to meet some friends of ours in the environmental community, who shall remain nameless for the moment because they want to make the announcement themselves, who will actually be carrying petitions across the state. I got a call today out of the clear blue from uh, uh, the congresswoman down in Ventura, who wants to be part of it and wants to help create uh, the petition gathering and all that sort of thing because the 2014 elections are a buyer election, and they're happy to have an issue that people might come out to the polls for. So the 2014 initiative, 2014 initiative will be the first statewide vote by citizens of California on whether we want nuclear power since the splitting of the atom began in the 50s. That's enormous. We really have a chance finally to say we don't want it. And just to let you know that this can work, when we did this in 1976, we passed a statute that said, if you don't have a solution to the reprocessing of the fuel and the burial of all this nuclear waste, you cannot build a new plant. State Supreme Court, defended by Lawrence Tribe, I might add, said, we agree, no more new plants. 
So that's why we only have two left. Bradshaw's gone. We have an identically worded referendum that says, hmm, can't let any of the existing ones keep creating waste as well. And that's what will end Diablo, and by then Rancho will be done. So that's what we're doing, and why the World Business Academy is because we're the only business group with technical and financial sophistication needed to challenge the nuclear industry. The Academy has received great reception at the California Public Utilities Commission for what we've done. The combined connections with the business community and the environmental groups are sort of unparalleled because we kind of are the bridge. And so that's it. We're the same energy project. And what I would like to do is just to make one personal appeal. So, Law, my wife, right here. Well, we've all met. Sitting on the floor here. Hi. On the floor. <laughs> and I have been uh, at this battle since 19, uh, well, formally since 97, but we started informally in the 80s. And uh, we've gotten as far as we can go with this. It's now, we got 38 million people in the state. I can't do this alone anymore. I, we really have got to get some help. But the issues are so important, and they affect all of us in so many ways, that if people are willing to start this conversation, I believe we can actually end this mess in our community. And when we've done that, not only will we feel good for ourselves, we'll feel really good for our children and our grandchildren.